Hello my dear students so today i am going to start the next topic that is characteristics of labor so in the previous video we have already discussed about the classification of labor so we have done that labor can be classified into three categories skilled semi skilled and unskilled so today we are going to discuss the characteristics of labor okay what are their characteristics how it is different from land as well as from other factors of production so first first characteristics we have labor is First characteristics we have labor is perishable. Okay, what is mean by perishable? Perishable means that cannot be stored for a long time, and if we store it for a long time, it will decay. Especially it happens in the case of vegetable. But here the concept is little different. So here perishable means if the workers are not going for a work on that particular day, then for that particular day his labor is wasted means suppose say i am a teacher and if i am not doing any work related to teaching for that particular day means my labor for that particular day is wasted okay so that is called perishable once again listen what is perishable perishable means if any worker he does not go for a work then for that particular day his labor will be wasted his effort will be wasted okay that's why it is called perishable and thus labor cannot be stored labor cannot be stored means i cannot be stored for 10 20 days and after that uh, i will be able to uh, contribute whatever i was supposed to do within that 10 15 days no whatever whatever the time period i will take rest that means for that particular day or for particular time period Okay, for that particular time period, my labor will be uh, wasted. So that's why it is called perishable. Now, second characteristics we have labor is an active factor of production. Okay, labor is an active factor of production. Now we know that we have already done that land and capital okay land and capital are what type of factors of production this land and capital these two are passive passive factor of production when as labor is an active factor of production now here you have to understand the difference why this land and capital is called passive factors of production and why this labor is called an active factors of production now land and capital cannot do anything by itself okay means land and labor uh, sorry land and capital cannot produce anything by itself in order to produce okay in order to produce uh, by this land and capital uh, we have to use labor so without the presence of labor land and capital cannot produce anything that's why it is called labor is an active factor and land and capital is a passive factor so in order to produce anything this land and capital needs the support of this labor okay land and capital needs support of labor here labor is an active factor because in order to produce in or order to operate this land and capital at least one labor is needed that's why this la uh, sorry this labor is called an active factors of production and land and capital is called passive factors of production the, now the next characteristics we have labor cannot be separated from laborer 
so here you have to understand suppose say we have we are taking example of land and capital now this land and capital can be separated from its owners okay this can be separated from its owners I will explain you how it will, it will be separated from owners. Suppose say, person A, person A is the owner of this land. Now, this person A can give his land for the production. So, this land and land and this particular owner can be separated. Okay, his land can only be used for the production. It is not necessary that owner has to be present with the land for any productive purpose and same case is applied in the case of this capital okay capital and owner can be separated that means if suppose say i have a different machine or equipments and i am owner of that machine or equipments suppose say for example roller okay we have seen while constructing the roads they are using the roller and the jcb so jcb that comes under capital okay capital so that capital and owner can be separated okay owner can simply stay at home and he can give his machine or equipments to somebody else, somebody else for a rent or for uh, some other person can hire his jcb or roller for any productive purpose so here this person owner owner and capital can be separated but that is not possible in the case of labor Okay, that is not possible in the case of labor. Laborer, labor and laborer cannot be separated. We cannot make it into two parts. Suppose say, I am one of the worker. Okay, I am one of the worker. So, I cannot be separated. My talent, my knowledge, my experience cannot be separated from me. Okay, whenever I am going to contribute anything, in any kind of production, I have to be physically present there for that particular uh, word. I'll give one example. Suppose, say, let's consider carpenter. Okay, so carpenter, the one who is making furniture. So that particular carpenter, he cannot stay at home and provide his uh, knowledge to somebody else to make that furniture. So here, carpenter and his talent. Okay, cannot be separated. So here, labor and laborer cannot be separated. Labor is the amount of effort. Okay, it may be physical or mental effort provided by the laborer in any kind of productive activity. So here, the carpenter talent and the carpenter cannot be separated. But here, if I am the owner of machine or equipments, then I can uh, give uh, that machine and equipments to somebody else to use in the production purpose. So here it is possible to separate. Okay, In the case of land and capital, it is possible to separate the owner and the land and capital, but that is not possible in the case of labor. So labor and laborer cannot be separated. Okay, next, another important characteristics of labor is that labor is mobile. Mobile means the labor can be easily shifted from one place to another place or we can shift the labor or we can move one labor from one occupation to another but that is not possible in the case of land okay in the case of land land is a what type of factors of production immobile immobile that means the land of Pakyung cannot be shifted to Gantok or land of Pakyung cannot be shifted to Namchi or some other places. But the laborers from Pakyung can be easily moved or shifted from Pakyung to Gantok or Namchi. So here we can see that labor is a mobile factors of production whereas land is immobile factors of production so labor, why it is mobile because labor can be easily shifted from one place to another place as well as that can also be uh, uh, they, they can also change their occupation suppose say today i'm working as a teacher okay maybe uh, if i want to change my profession that is possible for me i can go for some other type of work also i can go and work in the industry also so there i am changing my profession from teaching to 
uh, some other uh, technical work or maybe uh, in some other uh, work. So here, labor labor is mobile because he can change his occupation also as well as he can shift from or move from one place to another place but that is not possible in the case of land okay the next characteristics we have labor differs in efficiency mean what is efficiency efficiency means productive capacity of an of a labor or we can say that productive capacity of a, a worker okay efficiency means efficiency means productive capacity capacity of worker okay so here what is the statement labor differ in efficiency so all the labors cannot be equally efficient okay suppose say two workers are there working in the same suppose say a and b are two different labors and both are working in the same place okay same both are related to some uh, same type of job but it is not necessary that both a and b will be equally efficient so the reason may be due to lack of training suppose say if labor a is trained trained educated educated then labor a will be more efficient then that of labor a b so here what i mean to say that the efficiency of labor the productive capacity of worker may vary okay may differ why because if somebody is more educated more trained more experienced then his productive capacity will be more whereas if some labor he is less educated or if he has not gone for any kind of training or he has less experience so in that case his efficiency will be less the productive capacity will be less that's why it is called labor differs in efficiency okay so last characteristics we have labor can improve its efficiency yes that is possible okay the efficiency or the productive capacity of a labor can be improved how it can be improved by providing technical knowledge by providing more uh, training by providing more education the efficiency of labor can be improved okay once again listen how the efficiency can be improved the efficiency of labor can be improved by providing better technical knowledge better education okay more training so once the workers will become trained his efficiency will be improved Okay, now I'm going to start next topic. The next topic we have a difference between land and labor. Okay, land and okay, so I think. From these characteristics of land and labor, we can easily distinguish between land and labor. We have already done. So, first difference. What would be the first difference? Land. Okay. Land is whatever factors of production. Land is a passive. So, point number one, it can be land is a passive factors of passive factors of production whereas labor is what type of factors of production labor labor is a passive factors of production so that is the first difference now the second difference is that which one is more mobile labor is more mobile or land is more mobile so labor is more mobile and land is immobile so we can write land is immobile fact factors of production okay this is your production so land is immobile factors of production because 
the land of one particular area cannot be shifted or cannot be moved from one place to another place whereas labor okay labor is a mobile factors of production and it can be easily shifted from one place to another so here point number 2 we have labor is a mobile factor of production okay now the next difference we have okay now tell me which uh, which uh, factors of production uh, supply is fixed or which can be variable so the supply of labor is variable so supply of labor can be increased or decreased over a period of time if the population of a country is increasing the supply of labor the number of labor can increase but whatever the quantity of land we have so that land quantity of land will remain fixed so here supply of land is we can say that supply supply of land is fixed whereas here the supply of supply of labor is variable okay so here labor can be increase or decrease so normally what happens that when the population of a country increases the supply of labor or the number of labor will increase but the supply of land whatever the quantity of land we have that will remain fixed so supply of land is fixed and the supply of labor is variable 